untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white life gain combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And in fact it features two completely different infinite combos that have a little bit of overlap which is why they fit so nicely into the same deck. The first of our infinite combos involves Scurry Oak, a 3 mana 1-2-3 folk with Evolve. So if a creature with higher power or toughness than Scurry Oak enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And whenever one or more plus 1 counters are put on Scurry Oak, we can create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. We're not really planning to make squirrel tokens using the Evolve mechanic. Instead, we're going to rely on Heliod Sun Crowned to put plus 1 counters on Scurry Oak. The 3 mana 5-5 five, five legendary enchantment creature god is indestructible only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to white is at least 5. And then whenever we gain life, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment we control. And for one and a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So it's mostly that plus one counter ability that we're interested in, as that combines so nicely with a Scurry Oak. Now the two cards by themselves don't make for an infinite combo just yet. We still need a third and missing piece, which is a way to gain life whenever a creature enters a battlefield, which could be either a Soul Warden, which also counts opposing creatures, We've got two copies of Lunark Veteran, as well as the full playset of Prosperous Innkeeper, which is similar to the Veteran, but also makes a treasure when it enters a battlefield to help us ramp. So if we have one of these life gain enablers in play, as well as a Heliod, we can play Scurry Oak. This will trigger one of our life gain creatures, triggering Heliods in turn, letting us put a plus one counter on Scurry Oak, which will then make a squirrel token, once again triggering our life gain creature, and that's essentially an infinite combo that we can stop whenever we want by putting the plus one counter somewhere else. We get to essentially gain infinite life, make infinite squirrels, and if we happen to have more than one way to gain life, let's say we have two copies of Soul Warden, then we can also potentially deal infinite damage in that very same turn by stacking all those additional plus one counters on a creature that can attack in the same turn so we can deal infinite damage. So this is one of our two combos, then the second combo involves Presence of Gond, a 3 mana enchantment aura enchanting one of our creatures, letting it tap to create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. So Presence of Gond combos with both Famished Paladin as well as the newly added Lurking Roper. So both of these creatures say they don't untap during our untap step, but whenever we gain life we can untap a sad creature. So Famished Paladin, enchanted by Presence of Gond, can tap to create a 1-1 one, one token. Now of course that doesn't get us anywhere, but if we also happen to have Soul Warden, Veteran or Prosperous Innkeeper in play, we'll gain a life when that token enters the battlefield, letting us untapped Famish Paladin, so we can make infinite Elf Warrior tokens as well as gain infinite life. And the same goes for Lurking Roper, a 4-5 with the same abilities. So those are the two infinite combos our deck is capable of. Of course we can also complement the Presence of Gaunt combo with Heliot to also deal infinite damage in that very same turn. So there's a lot of interesting overlap between the two combos. And of course we do need that life gain creature for both combos to function, which is why they work so nicely together. And then of course we also have the full playset of Collected Company to help us find all those missing combo pieces as we get to look at the top six cards of our library and put two creature cards with mana value three or less from among them onto the back battlefield, and the only non-creature card in the deck besides company are the four copies of Presence of Gond, but we still have a solution to help us find Presence more consistently, and that is Heliot's Pilgrim, a 1-2 creature that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for an aura card and put it into our hand. So we essentially have six copies of Presence of Gond if we count Heliot's Pilgrim, we have six creatures to combo with Presence of Gond, then of course we've got a separate combo with four copies of Heliot, four copies of Scurry Oak, and then ten creatures to enable those two different combos with Lunar Veteran, Soul Warden and Prosperous Innkeeper, which is also perfect for casting a turn three collected company. And then the remaining cards include a full playset of Lenor Elves, which can also speed up our combo. There's a lot of different permutations that let us infinitely combo on turn 3. We could, for instance, play a turn 1 Soul Warden or Veteran, into a turn 2 Famished Paladin, into a turn 3 Present of Gaunt, make infinite tokens, gain infinite life. 
we could replace a turn one life gainer with maybe a turn one Lenor Elves into a turn two, let's say a Lurking Roper, and then turn three we could go Soul Warden or Veteran or even Prosperous Innkeeper into a Presence of Gaunt and combo on turn three. We could go turn one Lenor Elves, turn two Heliot, and then turn three go one of our life gainers into Scurry Oak and combo that way. So just a lot of different permutations to combo on turn three, and Lenor Elves is an important piece of that puzzle. And then finally we have two copies of Trellisara Moondancer, not part of any infinite combo really, but it does synergize very well with all the life gain creatures in the deck, because whenever we gain life we can put a Possum Possum counter on Moondancer, and importantly we get to Scry 1, and that Scry 1 is incredibly valuable for assembling our various combos, as well as just presenting a nice big creature to pressure the opponent. And then our mana base only has 20 lands, because we do have Lunar Elves and Innkeeper to make additional mana. We've got 4 of each basic land, 4 of the green-white pathway, 4 Sunpel Grove, and 4 copies of Temple Garden. And then we could also play with the Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion, as that's essentially a free roll, although it does add a red mana symbol to our deck box. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and I think we've got a Keeper, double Elves ramping into company, and then if we find a Life Gain Enabler as well as Famish Paladin or Lurking Roper, we can combo off. Not sure what we're up against, some sort of Teamer Gigantha deck. Might be a niv it Reborn deck, I guess as we picked up Heliod, so probably fine to play Heliod here, could also go for another Elves to make it more likely that I can still company next turn. And it does look like a 5 color niv deck. So they're gonna have quite a bit of interaction, as we see Vanishing vs. Exile Heliod, one of the few answers and then do I want to main phase collected company? I don't think my opponent has many counter spells, so I think we're better off waiting. Alright, and... Let's see here, if I go for Lurking Roper plus Innkeeper, I can combo with Presence of Gaunt next turn, so that seems pretty good. If I also had Healed in play, I would be attacking for infinite damage here, but we'll have to be satisfied with infinite Squirrel tokens and infinite life instead. So I'll start comboing, and we'll save the opponent scoops it up, or if they maybe have a sweeper. Although I don't think the niv deck can really beat infinite life, to be honest. Kinda have to do this all now, because our opponent could have instant speed removal for Roper if I end up tapping it in the opponent's turn. At least there's not too many triggers to worry about here, so it's pretty quick. And then do I want to do anything else this turn? Could play Famished Paladin, but yeah, opponent packs it in. Infinite tokens, infinite life is going to be too much for them to overcome. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and... This hand is promising, we've got Innkeeper into maybe a turn 3 company. If we find Presence of Gaunt we can combo with Paladin, if we find our Scurry Oak we can combo with Heliod. Facing a Black Lurus deck so we can expect some hand disruption, Thoughtseize probably taking company. So hand disruption not what we love to see on the other side, the Lurus red-black deck has quite a bit of interaction, so that's gonna make it difficult to combo. So probably one of our worst matchups. So there goes company as expected. And then... What do I want to play here? Probably still Innkeeper. Gives me more mana next turn, more options. In case I top deck another company, we could cast it. 
Although Heliod is more difficult for the opponent to interact with once it's in play. So that's the card we want to try and play out as soon as possible. Arcanist will be able to flash back Thoughtseize. So that's an argument for playing Paladin. So we have a blocker for Arcanist, so they can't easily make us discard without losing the Arcanist at least. Or I can play Heliod and hope that one of the Paladins survives the opponent's discard effects. So close call. Of course, if I heal it first, then Paladin will come into play with a counter if Innkeeper survives. But I think I want to uh, play Paladin. And then I might play a second one too, in case they have removal for the firsts. That way they have to decide between killing both Paladins or taking away a Heliod with a discard spell. It's going to be a Stitcher Supplier for now. Opponents playing the Claim the Firstborn package. Also not something we love seeing. Well, for now we've got Innkeeper and Paladin, so we could top deck Presence of Gaunt to combo off at any point. Opponent's going to Thought Seize Heliod and lose Arcanist. And then... They could have Unholy Heat to finish off one of my Paladins. I guess I'll double block just in case, but... Arcan is down, and Unholy Heat finishes off Paladin. So that happens. So we could still top deck Presence and just win here. After getting Thought Seize twice and our opponent having a spot removal spell. Right, it's going to be Moondancer, not bad, so let's attack first. And I'm fine if our opponent jumps. And then Moondancer lets me scry. As well as untapping Paladin. And Company has to be one of our better draws, so definitely keeping that. Opponent cannot make us discard it. So we'll see. Still Vorja Gantha as an extra potential play as well. Alright, Claim taking Arcanist back. They can give it haste and maybe flash back Unholy Heat to kill my Moondancer here. Since they have Delirium. And then I could trade with my Paladin as next turn the Arcanist threatens to get back Unholy Heat once again at the very least. Uh, the one reason not to trade is if my company hits, let's say, a uh, Heliod's Pilgrim, which finds presence. Although then my opponent still has a turn to, you know, disrupt a combo. So I think trading is acceptable, as Arcanist on the other side is quite valuable. And then we still have a company with an Innkeeper, so I could technically hit Heliod's Scurry Oak and combo off. My opponent had another claim for Arcanist, unfortunately. So I think I'm just going to pass and then let my opponent attack. And I can company response, maybe they cast another hand disruption spell. And it's going to be a channeler. So opponent's on empty. But this company has to be good for us. So it's going to be Unholy Heat on Innkeeper, and we'll respond with Company. It does remove Delirium briefly. So we're hoping for Heliod plus Curry Oak. Let's see if we can find it. And yeah, there it is. So that's Infinite Squirrels right here. And there's nothing the opponent can do about it. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is promising. I'm missing either Presence of Gaunt or Scurry Oak. Both would give us the infinite combo. So I'll try it. And then... 
my lane sequencing is somewhat interesting. I could play turn one veteran, but then potentially not be able to curve two into three. Or I could maybe go with innkeeper guaranteed and just play tapped some Petal Grove right now. There's always a chance we draw a plains or a forest, of course, but I think I'll play it safe. And then turn two innkeeper could maybe set up turn three company if we get lucky. Turn one elves from our opponent. And there's the Temple Garden, so that would have given an untapped Sun Petal Grove, but that's okay. So we'll Innkeeper. And if we're up against Mono Green Elves, it's all about comboing as quickly as possible. They don't really have any interaction, so whoever gets their first wins. The Elf deck typically wins around turn 4 if undisrupted with a good hand. Our deck could technically win on turn 3, but this ends looking more like a turn 4 at the earliest. All right, so now what? Could play a Lurking Roper just as a good blocker, and then if we top deck our Presence of Gons, we can combo off. It's probably the play. And then I think I save Veteran for next turn, so I can go Heliod into Veteran and get a bunch of life gain triggers and plus one counters as well. So let's try that. So cards I want to draw include Heliod's Pilgrim and Presence of Gaunt. Or we could still go for the Scurry Oak combo if we draw that instead. In the meantime, our opponent's got double Lanor Elves. Luckily no Archdruid. Sentinel for now. And our opponent passes, probably going for a Collected Company end of turn, so that could be scary. Another land to draw for us. So... I could attack with Lurking Roper, but that could end up poorly for me if our opponent hits multiple Lords with the Collected Company. So I'm just gonna play it safe and uh, play Heliods into a Lunark Veteran. Trigger Innkeeper. And put a plus one counter on maybe the Veteran to diversify. A 4 or 5 should be large enough to block any Elves that come across here. Although that's not entirely true, our opponent could technically hit a loss or a shepherd with company and then turn their creatures into 5-5s, five in which case having a 5-6 would have been nice. But I'll pass. Alright, opponent's got the company. What do they hit? Shepherd and Archdruid. That's unfortunate. So now they can activate the shepherd. Fierce Empath getting Crater Hoof Behemoth also probably kills us here. Alright, so... We didn't get disrupted, but sadly drew a few too many lands here. And our opponent was able to kill us on turn 4 here. Alright, GG, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little bit on the slow side with no one or two drops, but we do have a Roper plus Presence, so if we find any of our 10 life gain creatures we could maybe combo on turn 4. And then Double Company gives us a good late game in case we're up against a more grindy matchup. Tapped Hallowed Fountain could point towards a control deck. Just can't control it is. So not much going on in the first turns. Lurking Roper at least survives Lightning Helix. Magma Opus could be brought back with a Mizzix Mastery, potentially. I'm just gonna play a Lurking Roper. And see what happens. Opponent might counter it with an Archmage's Charm. Next turn, probably go for End of Turn Collected Company. As another Magma Opus is discarded for a treasure. Could see Torrential Gearhulk. Flashback Opus, but at least it only deals 4 damage, not enough to kill Lurking Roper. So, just land and pass here. Not gonna attack into a potential Gear Hulk. And let's see what they do. Opponent just passes. 
wants to keep up their potential counter magic. Steam vents untapped for Teferi. That resolves. It's gonna tuck Lurking Roper. Let's company and see what happens. Since I don't want to hit the Lurking Roper as I have another one in hand. Alright, so Innkeeper and Famished Paladin would let me combo with Presence, although... Let's see. I guess I would have the mana to also play Heliot so I can deal infinite damage right away. Although, of course, our opponent will have two mana thanks to those treasures still. But it's worth a shot. So if our opponent has no interaction, they would just be dead here to heal it into Presence of Gaunt on Paladin. And then I can put infinite counters on the Innkeeper as well. And at the very least, we should be able to kill Teferi. Right, opponent passes with their two treasures available. So I'm not feeling super confident in um, going for the combo here. Just because of that two mana could easily be a lightning helix. So I think I'm going to start by just playing Heliots, see if they have a response. And then I'm probably just attacking Teferi here to take that out and then... Uh, Take it from there. Because if I infinite combo making tokens, our opponent could easily just cast a sweeper. And then that doesn't really get us anywhere. Now I still have a little bit of mana available. Could play a Lurking Roper, although that still has the same problem of potentially facing a Wrath of God. Although if our opponent goes for Wrath, I maybe get to untap and company. Unless her opponent also has an Archmage's Charm. So it's a tricky spot. I think... I want to play Roper since it feels like her opponent has Gear Hulk for Magma Opus, which can just kill these two. And then I want to have a Lurking Roper in play. So let's try that. I get to untap Paladin and put a counter on it so it doesn't die to a Lightning Helix. Or they could kill Innkeeper in response. Alright, so Lightning Helix for Innkeeper. Fair enough. So glad I didn't go for the combo last turn. But now Lurking Roper's a safer target for Presence of Gond if we find another life gainer. Charm to draw two. Into Expressive Iterations. Her opponent's gonna be tapped out. Which means that... We could just draw one of our life gainers to combo off. And there we go. And thanks to Heliod we have infinite damage as well here. So patience was key this game. Running into Lightning Helix would have been very bad. Alright, that should do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this ends pretty much perfect. I guess we're missing a life gain enabler for Scurry Oak Heliod. Still gonna go with turn 1 Lunar Elves. Some Petal Grove also comes into play tapped at the moment, so that might slow us down by a turn. And there's Soul Warden, so what's the best way to sequence here? I'm guessing it's still. Heliod, and then next turn if I draw an untap land, I win, assuming no interaction.
better to play Scurry Oak and being able to trigger it in the very same turn. All right, a Sithis enchantments combo deck perhaps, but uh, yeah, just gonna play Soul Warden first and then a Scurry Oak. And that's the combo. Turn three. No infinite damage just yet, but infinite scrolls and infinite life nonetheless. We also had Lurking Ropers, so if we had drawn Presence of Gaunt, that would have been able to get there as well. So, yeah, it just shows the beauty of having two combos in one deck that have such overlap. So for three minus or anything our opponent could do, it's not like there's a ghostly prison they can play. Nine lives wouldn't do it. And they can't cast any sweepers for three mana, so I think we're safe. Just gonna make a nice surplus of squirrels here. Technically an enchantment deck could beat infinite life if they have something like Approach of the Second Sun as a finisher after locking you out with the Nine Lives Solemnity combo. And Nine Lives Solemnity would be an effective way to stop our combo, especially Solemnity stopping our plus one counters which shut down the Heliot combo. Alright, I think this is enough. And then we'll put a counter on Soul Warden I guess. Alright, let's see how our opponent responds. Three mana. And an explosion. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential. It's very redundant. We essentially have two ways to combo with Presence of Gaunt, as Pilgrim can get a second, and we've got both Roper and Paladin. Only two lands worries me a little bit, since we definitely need to get up to three. And we're still missing a way to gain life. So, on the draw, this might end up being too slow and clunky, despite having most of the combo pieces we need. We also have Heliod, so if we draw Scurry Oak, we still don't have a life gainer. I think on the draw this is maybe a tad too slow and clunky, but on the play I might have kept. Alright, is this better? Well, it's kind of all in on elves into company. I'll try it. And then do I keep Pilgrim or Heliod? Pilgrim finding our presence means it basically enables the combo for six of our creatures. Heliod only works with the four Scurry Oaks, so I think Pilgrim is going to be better here given a double company, but it's close. If our opponents can kill our land or elves, we're in trouble. All right, Lurking Roper means that Pilgrim getting presents opens up the Lurking Roper combo if we can find life gainers. For now an Opts, triggering Channeler. So we're putting kind of a blue-red spell stack. May or may not have Arclight Phoenix. Is our elf dead? Wanna draw a land either way here. Alright, we got to untap, we drew a land. So I could Lurking Roper, but I think I'm still more interested in playing a second elf. So we'll attack for one. And our opponent does seem to have a burn spell. They were maybe waiting for us to play like an Elvish Arch Druid to kill on turn two instead. Although I guess we did lead on pathway, so who knows. So we'll still need an extra land to company, assuming the elf lives. 
which it does not. Yeah, facing double unholy heat with this opening hand, not where we want it to be. Ether spell bomb, nice way to enable delirium as well. And it is a way to disrupt our combo. If they can keep a blue mana, that is. Land is nice. Play a lurking roper as a nice beefy blocker. And if they want to sack spell bomb, so be it. Double company could still catch us back up if we can cast them in time. Got lucky to draw a land so far. Spry dragon into mountain. Fair enough. And Soul Ward under draw. Well, I think we Pilgrim for our uh, enchantment, and then we essentially force our opponent to keep up Spell Bomb at all times, otherwise Soul Warden into Presence would combo off. But opponent might feel that they need to sack the Spell Bomb to draw, to keep digging for more action, we'll see. Alright, they're gonna hang on to it for now. And then if they keep up Spellbomb, we can maybe slow down their game plan and instead find a different way to combo by casting Double Collected Company instead. Kind of reminiscent of when Splinter Twin was a deck in Modern. People had to respect your combo game plan, keep up mana for interaction, and then you could often kind of win a fair tempo game plan with Bolts and Snapcaster Mages instead. Of course, this is a different animal altogether, but there are quite a few similarities in how this game is shaping up. So I'm just going to pass. And then end of turn company. And if our opponent ever taps out, we can go for it. Not taking a ton of damage from Sprite Dragon so far. And we found Heliod and Scurry Oak, so that's one combo. So, sure, I guess we'll go for it. Alternatively, I can get like an Innkeeper for more mana, which is also a life gainer, but we'll go with this. And then, as soon as I trigger Soul Warden here, we could go for the Scurry Oak combo. So, they might need more burn spells. Alright, untap, find another Heliod. I think we're just going for another company. If I play Soul Warden, I don't get to trigger the Scurry Oak combo, otherwise I could go for both a Soul Warden to enable Scurry Oak combo as well as Presence of Gaunt for Lurking Roper. But, yeah, given their opponent has three mana, they can Spell Bomb and have another Burn spell, I don't think that's likely to work. So instead I'm just going to go for another company instead which could still trigger the Heliot combo with Scurryoke at instant speed if I find more Soul Warden type effects. So... Seems like a fine place to be. Right, opponent bounces Roper. So in response I could Company, which may combo for Heliot, or at the very least forces them to kill the Scurry Oak. Yeah, I think that's fine to do it now. They don't have any blue mana for counter spells available. And we found Famish Paladin, Moon Dancer as probably the pick. Because that means that next turn, if I play Soul Warden, I can combo with Presence of Gond and Famish Paladin instead. I also get some Evolve triggers for what it's worth. So they might kill Scurry Oak. And then have less interaction for Famish Paladin. Alright, another Unholy Heat, so... Yeah, opponent was packing a lot of interaction, and they needed all of it. Two cards left in hand. Let's see if the Surveil stays on top. Goes to the Graveyard. So our opponent does not currently have Delirium. So they might only be able to deal 2 damage to Famish Paladin if we go for Presence of Gond. Of course they could kill Soul Warden instead and disrupt the combo that way. 
but they've already cast three copies of Unholy Heat. They're probably going to try and get back Arclight Phoenix here. So the hope is that they tap out and then next turn I can go Soul Warden Presence on Paladin and get there. And they are back to Delirium now. And there's two copies of Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard, so... Yeah, this could hurt if they do have removal for Paladin. It's going to be Finale, oof, with uh, Unholy Heat in the graveyard. Yeah, it's going to hurt. Kills a Paladin. So our opponent knows which targets to prioritize. They're going to get back Double Phoenix. And uh, I would be taking 14, so one shy of lethal. And now... Yeah, now we can't actually combo off anymore since we don't have Paladin or Roper in play without summoning Sickness, so well played to our opponents. They knew which targets to prioritize and uh, yeah, not sure we could have done much different either. I can play Soul Warden. I could, you know, try and gain life with Heliod's ability, but that's not going to save me. Um, so yeah, we're dead in the water here. Jeez. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't seem amazing, only two lands, so we're gonna struggle to cast company, triple paladin without a presence. So, take a mulligan, this is better. And then... Of course, we want to keep Roper plus Presence, and then Innkeeper goes with a Roper combo. So I guess we bottom Heliod and then keep the Elves as additional mana, as the Grove will come into play tapped here. Up against Goblins. So, usually a winnable matchup, as they have little to no interaction. But they might be splashing black for Munitions Experts. Alright, it looks like something different. Burning Tree Emissary times two. Still don't know what the haste creature is. Stomp for Bone Crusher. It is a creature that has haste, so a completely different deck than the one I imagined, but hopefully they don't have much more interaction and we get to combo with Lurking Roper in two turns. Now some Petal Groves untapped, thanks to our Temple Garden. A roiling Vortex, wow. So if they keep that red mana available, they can prevent us from gaining a life, which stops the combo. So that's a problem. Of course, they're not guaranteed to keep up that mana. Could also go Soul Warden into Moon Dancer right now. But I think I'm better off playing the Roper as maybe they're less likely to use the Roiling Vortex mana. And then I'll hang on to my treasure in case we need it for, like, a collected company. Can always play Soul Warden next turn before playing Presence, so we have an extra life gain enabler in case they kill the Innkeeper. Really want them just to tap out for their Bone Crusher Giant. It's going to be a ringleader instead. Alright, so... Not going to be able to combo with Presence of Gaunt. Play a Soul Warden, probably see them use Vortex in response. So I can't gain any life. And 
and uh, could still use presence in the opponent's turn to combo, forcing them to use Vortex then, but I guess our opponent's game plan is just going to be to keep activating Vortex in each player's turn, opponents had on life, so they're going to win. So I don't know how I break this situation, basically. Yeah, don't really have an answer. I guess I'll play the presence and hope they make a mistake. Alright. So I'm not going to do this now. Now what we can do, thanks to the presence, is respond to the Roiling Vortex activation, so they'll need two mana to stop the combo from happening in my turn and the opponent's turn. So I guess that is a pretty big tax on their resources. So we'll see if that ends up making a difference. Opponent moves to combat, so... What's the worst case scenario here? They have like an Ember Cleave and I block and they can kill my Roper. I think I still have to block. I guess the problem is if I use Roper in the opponent's turn and they prevent a life gain, it's still going to be tapped, so I actually can't untap the Roper and combo again in my turn. So I guess I'll block here and we'll see what happens. Alright, opponent deals damage. That works. Opponent's just gonna pass. Man, yeah, I don't really see a realistic out. Can just start beating down with Soul Ward and an Innkeeper, I guess. But I don't think I can tap the Roper. Second presence doesn't change that. But dealing 15 before they burn me out is going to be a challenge. What a strange turn of events. I guess I can put the presence of Gond on a different creature. Which can further tax their mana. Well, our opponent may have made a mistake here, so let's see. If I use Lurking Roper now, they have to Vortex again, they'll be tapped out, and then they may not be able to stop the combo next turn. Unless they can kill me right now, but I'm happy to chum block. So their opponent uses Vortex again? No, they don't. Alright, they're gonna do it now. So they have two mana floating. But I have three blockers and our opponent's now tapped out. And if I go for another presence, I get to combo off here. So... I'll block. I guess I can chump. Presence on, let's say, the Soul Warden. Which will untap the Roper, and then we're off to the races. Alright, so slight missequence from our opponents. It's gonna end up costing them. I guess I was better off trading off Moon Dancer, because now I have all these cry triggers to deal with. Well. Let that uh, teach you never to give up. There's always a chance the opponent messes up. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hand is promising, but only two lands to go with company means we might not be able to cast it in time. And we're missing heal lead for Scurry Oak and an untapper to go with presence. If I could mulligan and see the same hand, 
I would probably keep put presence on the bottom. But can we do better is the question. I think we can. Alright, this is not much better, but I guess I'll try it. Bottom and elf. This hand has a lot of mana. Fewer combo pieces. But still just a scurry oak away from winning. And there's a company, perfect. So, innkeeper into elves. Not sure what deck my opponent's playing. Black, green, lunar elves. Maybe a sacrifice deck. They've got their own innkeeper. And a shambling gas, so points towards a sacrifice deck. Well, let's see if we can uh, combo off. Do I company now? Probably. The one downside is I won't have Healy in play. So it might be safer to heal it and then next turn company. That way if I hit Scurry Oak I can combo right away without giving the opponent the opportunity to potentially kill it. Uh, which they could with like a Mayhem Devil. Although that being said, they could also kill my Innkeeper here. Could have put Gigantha in hand using my treasure. May or may not have been worth it. If they somehow kill both my elves, having the treasure around could be useful. It's going to be a binding. Going after the innkeeper is my guess. Okay. So I can still combo if I find Scurry Oak and another life gainer. So that's fine. Moon Dancer is excellent. I guess we'll play that after company here. And I found Scurry Oak and Innkeeper, so that does it. Count from the Scurry Oak. And we can start comboing. Didn't think the Sacrifice deck can beat Infinite Life. I guess something like the Meat Hook Massacre would be a little awkward, because they would gain life for each squirrel I make. But we would still be left with a huge Scurry Oak. And I guess I could have two infinitely large creatures if I play Moon Dancer here before continuing to combo. So I guess I'll give that a try. Just means more scry triggers to click through. So maybe I'll make a lethal amount of squirrels first and then play Moon Dancer. Alright, so let's put the counter somewhere else. And then Moon Dancer. And I can continue comboing while scrying towards something else. All the Moon Dancer triggers are going to be at the bottom of the stack. So yeah, the main card I can think of that we're playing around here is Meat Hook Massacre. So we're probably at a point where we can stop. This Moon Dancer should be large enough for this to be effective. Put another counter on Innkeeper. And then probably just look for company. Still have the treasure to cast it. So, should be able to find one. Right, there we go. Keep that on top. Alright, hopefully we don't get punished for not comboing off completely. For Pun plays like a Bolas of Citadel here and deals 47 damage. That's kind of the problem with Arena not handling infinite combos all that well. In paper you could say I gain a million life and make a million squirrels. On Arena there's a token limit and a time limit. Alright, 
All right, looks like we might get there. So probably no need to company. Attack with the team. And that should do it. Bon might have their own company. In which case I might want a company response or at least float my mana. In case they hit a Mayhem Devil, although they might just be blank green without red. Who knows. Blood Artist plus Wostrider. I don't think those are gonna save them here. But I guess I'll company just because. Out of curiosity, Roper Scurry Oak, so we've got another combo rolled up here if we wanted to. Alright, I won't torture my opponents too much. Couple counters on the Scurry Oak. Alright, that's enough. Let's go to damage. Opponent could maybe still survive here thanks to the Blood Artist by sacking all the blockers with Voice Rider. So it could have uh, spread out my plus one counters more onto my squirrels to prevent that from happening. But also don't see them killing me on the way back here. So with two life gainers and a scurry oak combo, we would have been able to deal infinite damage as well by just stacking up those extra plus one counters. After using one for the scurry oak, the other one can go anywhere we like. So our opponent's gonna survive. But uh they're not gonna have much left. We'll pass it back. This game going on for longer than it should have. But that's the limitation of infinite combos again. They do actually have the Citadel, so... We'll see how far they can combo. At 6 life, it's probably not going to be much. So yeah, I mean... You might call it BM while I'm... Getting extra counters with the Scurry Oak with that company last turn, but I probably should have gone even further in trying to kill my opponent. But yeah, GG's. So overall, this green-white twin trigger combo deck has a lot going for it. Having two different combos to choose from means a lot more redundancy and uh, it's more difficult for the opponent to play around as well. A card that stops one of the combos may not necessarily stop the other. That being said, there are a lot of answers to the combo, just playing cheap removal, like we saw in the Phoenix matchup, can get there, assuming you've got enough of it. You could play Sweepers, which stops the infinite tokens, and beating infinite life for most control decks is not difficult thanks to Teferi here of Dominaria. Being able to minus on himself means that they can keep drawing the same Teferi and prevent decking that way, even though they might have drawn more cards than you, and then you'll eventually run out of cards, assuming they can emblem a Teferi first to keep you off having any permanence in play. So that's not necessarily a great matchup, but you could always get lucky and combo on turn 3 before the opponent manages to set up any of their defenses, so it does have those explosive starts as well. 
And then as we saw in the Monorad matchup, Roiling Vortex, also very effective at stopping any life gain synergies, although you could potentially figure out a way to include some main deck disenchants to answer those permanents in case they show up, although that's of course going to dilute our combo game plan. So by no means an unbeatable deck, but I think a solid contender as one of the better decks in the metagame right now. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.